Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching American Psycho. What do you know about this movie? Uh, Christian Bale? Christian Bale, that's okay. for sure. Yeah, he's on the cover. That's it. This has been a really, really popular recommendation. Yeah. Uh, so we figured we would start out spooky season. It's officially spooky season. Since we started the channel, we've already done some Halloween spooky theme stuff around October. It's always been a ton of fun, so we're doing it again. Super excited, but yeah, this has been very highly recommended. And I don't know anything about this other than Christian Bale as a psycho, an American psycho. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got to. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Ooh, that stands out. That looks like jelly. Ketchup? Yeah, ketchup? I really like this intro so far. Oh. Willem Dafoe? Oh, yes! Jared Leto, what the fuck? Fancy looking food. So small. <laughs> Justin Thoreau, wasn't he married to Jennifer Aniston at some point? Yes. Goat cheese profiteroles. Reese Witherspoon, holy shit. This cast. They don't have a good bathroom to do coke in. <laughs> cool it with the anti-Semitic remarks. Oh, I forgot, Bateman's dating someone from the ACLU. <laughs> Only 570. Not bad. Credit card roulette. Nope, they're just splitting it. <laughs> so a group of some high profile business guys with interesting dance moves. Fucking ugly bitch. I want to stab you to death. Oh. That was crazy. And just smiles at her when she turns around. Yeah. Very organized. My name is Patrick Bateman. I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. I can do a thousand now. Damn. I use a deep pore cleanser lotion, honey almond body scrub, an exfoliating gel scrub. Much more than my routine. <laughs> I don't have a routine. I use <laughs> shampoo on everything. Man, how long is your routine? There is no real me. Interesting. Against him peeling. Yeah, peeling off his face. I simply am not there. Right, you're terrifying. Yeah. Is this the music that a psycho listens to? Don't wear that outfit again. Wear a dress, a skirt, or something. You're prettier than that. Oh, jeez. He knows what he likes, I guess. Yeah, I hope she knows her worth. Friends for 600. You're in courtship. What does he do? Just watch Jeopardy? <laughs> a lot of music in this. Yeah. And lots of chocolate chips. Oh, Reese. My fiance keeps buzzing in my ear. Fiance? We should do it and have a wedding. I can't take the time off work. Your father practically owns the company. I want to fit in. That's it? It's an odd reason. So he doesn't do anything at work if his dad is the boss or the owner. <laughs> okay. What an interesting menu. Timothy Bryce and Evelyn are having an affair. I'm having an affair with Courtney Rawlinson. Who's Courtney? She's engaged to Lewis Carruthers, the biggest doofus in the business. Promote civil rights while also promoting equal rights for women. Wow. <laughs> Patrick. Got a lot of opinions. She's like hit all the talking points. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hello? That was psycho just how he caught up to her. These yeah, are very yeah, expensive Is that blood? I think so. We don't, don't shut your fucking mouth. Will I will kill you. I yeah. Stupid bitch! Hey! Understand? Jeez, he was just exploding. Cranberry juice, cran apple. Really? Maybe we could do lunch one day next week. Next Saturday? Sure. Can't, I'm afraid. <laughs> he said he called tonight. Pumpkin, you're dating an asshole. Just watching porn? Patrick, stop calling me. <laughs> Inside Lydia's ass? Mm. Dinner. Thinking Dorsia. Dorsia is nice. Or something fabulous. There's so much like white in this movie, at least in his room. Yeah, it's just like very sterile. Yeah. But is it possible to reserve a table for two at 8.30 perhaps? <laughs> Damn, that's your response? You should have had his uh, secretary do this. You know, Courtney, you should take some more lithium or have a Diet Coke, some caffeine might get you out of this slump. How do you even get her in? You're gonna have the <laughs> peanut butter soup with smoked duck and mashed squash. Mm. 
She's so out of it. At least he got away with taking her to a different restaurant. Hello, Halberstram. Alan has mistaken me for this dickhead Marcus Halberstram. <laughs> Does the same exact thing I do. I even go to the same barber. Yeah, they look very similar. How's Cecilia? She's a great girl. Oh, yeah. I'm very lucky. He just plays into it? Yeah. Call me. What, Friday? No can do. <laughs> I got an 8.30 res at Dorcia. Oh, he got Dorcia? New card. What do you think? Got some vice marks. Vice president? That's nothing. Look at this. <laughs> Another vice president? What do you think? Nice. Oh, is he jealous? You ain't seen nothing yet. Impressive. Wow. I like his card the best. Patrick? Yeah. Are you psycho? <laughs> Oh, that's just like his. A tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. Something wrong? Patrick? He did not like that being the best card. <laughs> he doesn't even need to kill anyone to be a psycho. The movie could just end right there. And I'll be like, yeah, that was American Psycho. You want some money? Some food? You reek of shit. You know what a fucking loser you are? What? Hmm? <laughs> oh. <gasps> Holy fuck. That was so disturbing. Was that because he was pissed off about the business cards? I don't know, like, what sets him off. My nightly bloodlust has overflowed into my days. My mask of sanity is about to slip. Mask of sanity? So he just notoriously kills at night and now he can't control it? So I would assume those bloody sheets was that girl that he was walking next to. You're late, honey. I've been here the entire time. You just didn't see me. What's your Grinch want for Christmas? And don't say breast implants again. <laughs> Such a toxic relationship. We should have dinner. Bring, um, Cecilia? Yes. Let's do it, Marcus. Marcus? Marcus Halberstram for two at seven. Would you like to hear the specials? Not if you want to keep your spleen. <laughs> we should have gone to Dorcia. I could have gotten us a table. Nobody goes there anymore. <laughs> it's old news. Wasn't Rothschild originally handling the Fisher account? How'd you get it? Could tell you that, but they don't have to kill you. <laughs> Gotta watch out here, man. I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? <laughs> Did he really say that? Cecilia, how is she? I think she's having dinner with Evelyn Williams. Great ass. Goes out with that loser Patrick Bateman. Loser Patrick Bateman? Paul, you're fucked. You're on newspaper? There's sheets on everything? <laughs> oh my god. The dude has no idea he's in a kill room. What was that? I don't know. It just had his name on it, I he think. He should probably take more of it. It's not working. He's been compared to Elvis Costello. <laughs> what an axe. Why are there copies of the style section on the place? Is that a raincoat? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> 87. Huey released this. Hip to be square. What is this movie? Hey, Paul! Ah! Oh! Start getting a reservation at door kidnap! Holy shit. How do you dispose of this body? Is it not gonna spray all over the ceiling? Yeah, that was a lot of spray. Oh, he just drags it out the front? <gasps> what? Patrick! Oh. Where did you get that overnight bag? <laughs> How did you just get away with- There's just a whole trail of blood in the lobby? There is a moment of sheer panic. Paul's apartment obviously more expensive than mine. <laughs> oh my. That's your panic? Does he have no significant other? Nothing? I don't think so. Paris. Singapore. This music is freaking me out. Been called away to London for a few days. Meredith, I'll call you when I get back. That's super incriminating, I feel like. I am like <laughs> so disturbed by this guy. I would assume he has a routine for disposing of bodies. But that didn't seem very great. Detective Donald Kimball. Send him in, I guess. Uh, this has to be maybe related to the blood in the lobby. Oh, it's uh, Willem Dafoe. I'm Donald Kimball. Pat Bateman. And if there's anyone who can out crazy, it's Willem Dafoe. So. <laughs> it's super busy. I've been hired to investigate the disappearance of Paul Allen. Was that who he killed? Yeah. Coffee? Paul and ours? Can you bring Mr. Kimball a bottle uh, of no, a poly? No, really, I'm okay. It's no problem. <laughs> Lime can always get you a lime. <laughs> Get a lime, please. Your address? West 81st Street. Very nice. Not as nice as Paul's. He was part of that whole Yale thing. Probably a closet homosexual who did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> Is that everyone at Yale? Where did he go to school? Yale. 
I just wanted to know if you know. I'm confused. Had his apartment been burglarized? I mean, no one's dealing with a homicide squad yet or anything, right? People just disappear. People just get murdered. I have a lunch meeting for seasons in 20 minutes. Isn't that a little far uptown? <laughs> Anything else occurs to you? Any information? Absolutely, I'm 100% with you. That was not good. And he's really bad at coming up with excuses. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Texas Chainsaw? Yeah. And fast crunches. Man, watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre while working out. I haven't seen you around here. Do you want to come to my apartment or not? I can make an exception. You're dead, lady. Like a girl, early 20s, blonde. My name's Paul Allen. Why is he pretending to be Paul now? Oh, you're right. I didn't even pick up on that. And he hired another girl? Yeah, so two blondes? Two, two blondes. Choose a robe, not the Bichon. Come and meet me and our guest in the living room. What's a Bichon? I don't know, a fancy robe? Like, I wouldn't know which robe to pick. <laughs> oh. She blonde? I'm no. I'm good of you to come. I think she's a redhead. Not quite blonde, are you? This is gonna be so awkward. Don't you want to know what I do? No. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. They just want to get paid. You have a really nice place here. How much did you pay for it? That's none of your business. <laughs> I don't want you to get drunk, but that's a very fine Chardonnay. You're not drinking. How can he be so creepy? At least the furniture is not covered. I was just thinking that. It's not staged for murder. But also he made it very known that they know his name is Paul Allen. Yeah. Kirsty, take off the robe. Videotape? Remove your dress. Is this extra? Sabrina, why don't you uh, dance a little? Get down on your knees so Sabrina can see your asshole. <laughs> what is this dialogue? Sabrina, don't just stare at it. Eat it. What the fuck? <laughs> like, he, like, he's literally only looking at himself. Yeah. They're not dead. Yeah. Oh. You go now. We're not through yet. Oh, what the fuck? Did you just beat them? There are no, no girls, girls with, with good, good personalities. personalities. We'll satisfy all sexual demands. Keep her dumb fucking mouth shut. Jesus. You know what Ed Gein said about women? Serial killer. Wisconsin in the 50s. Of course you would listen to serial killers. Be real nice and sweet. And what the other part of him think? What her head would look like on a stick. Even they didn't find that funny. It's my business card. Gold? And everyone's a vice president? So someone else gonna get murdered now? Someone's gonna get murdered because that pissed him off. Is he gonna kill someone right here? Yeah, what is happening? Patrick, I've seen you looking at me. What? You can't imagine how long I've wanted this. <laughs> he just saved his life. Where are you going? I've gotta return some videotapes. <laughs> What a way to save your life, I guess. <laughs> he will never be in the same room with that guy ever again. I feel like I don't have a lot to say because I'm so like... Disturbed? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Everything this guy does is awful. <laughs> Do you remember where you were the night of Paul's disappearance? Probably returning videotapes. <laughs> what? He has the worst excuses. That's not the information I've received. Pin down where you were. It would make my job a lot easier. Absolutely. Huey Lewis in the news. Oh. Great stuff. Does he know something? Uh, lunch next week? I'll be there. So that's what he was listening to, right? When he killed him? Yeah. Is <gasps> Courtney? The uh, other girl or whatever? Yeah. Beyonce to the guy who wants him? Yeah. Will you call me before Easter? Maybe. Easter? Yeah, he killed the other person in December? Yeah. If I don't see you before Easter, have a nice one, okay? What's so significant about Easter? Definitely weak to be okay. I'm trying to do drugs. <laughs> Steroids? Wall Street is crazy. So what do you do? Well, murders and executions mostly. Do you like it? A lot. Who work in mergers and acquisitions? Mergers. There's something sweet about you. No, run. Um, she's not okay. 
the subtle way that they just say people are just gone. Yeah. Bone, bonus, boniest meat I bone. Help? He literally does nothing at work. Jean, would you like to accompany me to dinner? No. Anywhere you want, just say it. I can get us in anywhere. Taking too long. Dorcia? Oh, he can't get in there. Uh, Dorcia, yes? Two tonight at, well, let's say nine o'clock. I said we are totally booked. Two at nine? Perfect. <laughs> Why don't you meet me at my place at seven? Is he gonna give uh, Paul's name? I don't know. I think he's just gonna kill her. What a wonderful view. Jean? Oh, what? Sorbet? Thanks, Patrick. I'd love some. She seems so nice. Yeah. You look great. Very fit. Well, maybe we shouldn't go out to dinner. You're not going to dinner. What do you really want to do with your life? So many possibilities. Oh, just fantasizing how he's going to kill her. Do you have a boyfriend? Are you seeing anyone? Maybe. Don't you have a fiance? Holy you know. shit. Just duct tape and a chainsaw? Did you know that Ted Bundy's first dog was named Lassie? Who's Ted Bundy? All his heroes are serial killers. Yeah. No, put it in the cart. Sorry. What? Oh, what did he grab? The thing's covered. A nail gun? Oh, shit. Did that save her life? I hope you're not out there with some little number you picked up because you're my Mr. Bateman. Bye-bye. So she has to know her. Yeah. I don't think I can control myself. I know I should go. Get out. Right? I think if you stay, something bad will happen. Yes, he's saving your life. You almost got a nail to the back of the head. Don't forget you have a lunch date tomorrow with Donald Kimball at Smith & Walensky's. Thanks. Wow. I don't know, he spared her. She really does seem like a nice person though. Yeah? Did he get his story in order? Any new thoughts? He had dinner with Marcus Halperstrom. Marcus? Does Marcus have an alibi? I checked it out. It's clean. He does not look well. No. He was at Atlantis. Craig McDermott, Frederick Dibble, you. Right, yeah, of course. What? One of his friends killed him for no reason whatsoever would be too <laughs> ridiculous. Does he know? Yeah, it's like everything he says. Like, did he just bait him into saying, oh yeah, I was there when he knows for a fact he wasn't? Maybe. Do not go back. I had to go to emergency after last time. Come in the limo and talk to me for a minute. Do not do this. Whatever the fuck he did to you. And was the other girl's head in the freezer? No, they both left. No, they both left. That girl was the model girl, I think. Well, I actually might need a little surgery after last time. Here's a check. Oh, I think he knows that check's not going to be cashed. Who is this driver? I'm meeting a friend of mine He's in my new apartment shortly. I cannot believe she went back. They're far. You know, they're far. Oh. This is nicer than your other apartment. Oh, is this Paul's? He wouldn't be ballsy enough to go to Paul's, right? I don't know. He's not the brightest killer. You were hanging out with that bimbo Allison Poole. Wait, so they know each other? Yeah. She's my cousin. Where do you summer? Southampton? <laughs> Where do you summer? This tastes weird. Anyway, I'm at Paul Norman's and I'll try you again later. Paul Norman? Did you know that guy who disappeared? Was he a friend of yours? Paul? Halcyon? Oof, I would take a Halcyon. I don't even know what that is. I'd like to see two of you get it on. Patrick, you're a lunatic. Yeah. Does he do this all the time? So far. Why would you think I would be into that? You're making me feel weird. You're about to be knocked out. Whitney Houston's debut LP. What is this obsession with music and murder? You own a Whitney Houston CD? <laughs> Did he give them, like, ecstasy or something? It's just full of so much shit. <laughs> yeah, you better remember to just fucking leave. He literally said that was his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what did he just do to her? <laughs> oh my. What the fuck? <laughs> Has he just been taking every dead body to this house? Did he literally just Bite that girl? I think so. Try to find the stairs, maybe? What the fuck? Holy shit. Are you trying to time this? Whoa. How did nobody hear that? Like, not a soul came out. Is there, like, just no one in that whole fucking building? 
He had like seven dead bodies in there. He's just drawing that right there. I need to engage in homicidal behavior. I have no other way to fulfill my needs. Is he saying these things? I feel like he's confessed multiple times to people. I don't think we should see each other anymore. Your friends are my friends. You can have them. <laughs> you can have them. What about the past? What past? Lady, run. You're not terribly important to me. What is it that you want? I have to return some videotapes. <laughs> You knew nothing about this guy. So if that really is Paul Allen's place and he has tons of bodies in there, has that detective just never been back to Paul's place? Maybe not after the first time? Here, kitty kitty. Oh, you're just gonna step on it, aren't you? Oh my God, what are you doing? What? Is this real? Don't ATMs have cameras on them or something? What? You have to be dreaming. Are we dreaming? Yeah. Is this the empty the building? Aisle, Mr. Smith. Oh, what the fuck? Mr. Smith? Is he just in like a mental hospital? <laughs> you just what? So he's back again. Was this the same building? Yes, it was the same building, same guy. He like did a do-over. Right, he, he signed went, in He went time. out and came back in. You're my lawyer, so I think you should know I've killed a lot of people. I killed Paul Allen dissolving in a bathtub in Hell's Kitchen. Whoa. The tapes. Uh, some of the girls have seen the tapes. I ate some of their brains. What the fuck? I don't know why I'm surprised. I'm not sure I'm going to get away with it. I mean, I guess I'm a pretty sick guy. I'm still just like waiting for him to wake up somewhere. I made you up at Harry's bar. Keep your eyes open. What is even happening? Did he even dial a number to call anyone? Because are the police actually looking for him because he just killed a bunch of cops too? I have no idea because I don't know how that just exploded a couple of cop cars. Like there's just stuff that just doesn't make sense in this movie. Like how he was able to just drag that body and just with blood all over the lobby. How that one girl was running around this whole building without anyone hearing or noticing. I mean, he walked through it with a chainsaw. Yeah, and it would have been an absolute mess down there. Like how do you clean that up? Isn't this the place? There's one of them in there, like one of the rooms in there. Like there's no bodies being hung up. It looks like he's shocked. Like he's expecting to see bodies in here. Can I help you? You saw the ad in the Times? I mean, yeah. There was no ad in the Times. <laughs> Don't make any trouble, please. I suggest you go. She trying to cover up the fact that there was blood everywhere? Is she trying to sell it? Maybe. I mean, it was a horrific scene. Don't come back. I won't. Did all this shit happen and all his crimes have been covered up? Or has no one actually died? Jane? I need help. You're sounding so fucking sad! <laughs> what are you looking for? That was like a picture of someone getting shot. It was graphic, whatever it was. He's showing up here? Where even is he? Oh, At this... Harry's? Harold, did you get my message? That was hilarious. That was you, wasn't it? Oh, this is his lawyer? Yeah. So he really did call- By the way, Davis, how's Cynthia? What do you mean? Oh, excuse me, nothing. Cynthia? He thinks he was joking. Davis, your joke was amusing. Is he not Patrick Bateman? I'm not Davis, I'm Patrick Bateman. Don't you recognize me? You're my lawyer. What is going on? I killed Paul Allen. But that's simply not possible. Why not, you stupid bastard? I had dinner with Paul Allen twice in London. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. So who the fuck is he? He's Harold, right? He's not Patrick Bateman. He said Davis, something Davis, I it was right? like Harold Davis or something? What did his business card say? I don't know. All the mayhem I have caused, I have now surpassed. This confession has meant nothing. Was this whole movie nothing? Oh, my head. All right, that was American Psycho. What'd you think? I am so confused. This might be the most confused ever, possibly ever, for a movie on the channel. I just honestly don't know, did we miss something? Are we just supposed to be confused? 
who the fuck was he? Was he Patrick Bateman? Did anything happen? I, what? <laughs> I mean, this movie has been so recommended to us, like so many times. We talked to my parents today that we were gonna watch it and they said it was incredible. I'm like genuinely wondering if we missed something. Huge that clicked everything? Yeah, I will say Christian Bale was phenomenal <laughs> yeah. in that he was so awful. He was just a terrible human being. Not even the, just the fact that he was obviously, maybe not obviously, I don't know. <laughs> if he was killing all of these people, obviously terrible. Right. On that front. But also just throughout his life, like his interactions with people, the way that he talks to people. I mean, he was short and cold with everyone. I'm looking at this cast list and I'm like, was there anybody in this movie that was not awful? I liked his receptionist assistant. The receptionist, but even then she was still aware of who Evelyn was and was still willing to go out with him. Well, it but... sounded like she wasn't sure if they were still together. That's true. So she was, she was all right. Um, obviously Evelyn was just maybe blind to everything, but, but then was there anything to be blind of in the first place? Yeah, Evelyn just seemed so like self-involved. That's true. All of the other business guys were super shitty. I guess like his victims didn't really seem like horrible people. Um, I think he was calling her Christy. Right. Um, the prostitute, she, I don't know what she was thinking getting back in that car. No. But yeah, I mean, all the business guys and then all of the girls, like everybody was sleeping with everyone besides their partner. Oh, that's true. Evelyn was having an affair with Justin Theroux's character, Timothy, I think, right? Yeah, and then Patrick was having an affair with that other guys. Courtney, I think. I just, I'm so confused if anything happened at all, or is this just all in his head? There's multiple moments throughout this movie that you just question. Uh, first of all, he sucked at killing people in terms of an idea of how to get away with things. Like he had a body in a bag and just was like carrying it and got blood all over the lobby, put it in a taxi's trunk, right? Like that was just a taxi. Yeah, but I think he went with it. He went with it. That doesn't make any sense how he would get away with that. When he's getting questioned by the Willem Dafoe, the, the detective, he was so terrible at coming up with a story or a cover. He was like shaking and nervous. Even when he had like a week to prepare a lie, he still wouldn't- It was like his, worse. It was worse. Like he was so bad at killing people. Like uh, Christy, who was screaming and running out of the halls and almost got away with some absolutely magical miracle type of chainsaw kill from like 20 stories up. Yeah. Like that just doesn't seem realistic or real at all. And then we had actual scenes that were just done over again. Like how he went into the building, killed the two people, left, came back to the same building, and those people were alive now, I think. Or how he got in a shootout with the cops and somehow blew up like two cop cars with a pistol. What? I don't, I don't think anything actually happened. Obviously the big one, Paul Allen, that was like a main kill. And then for him to talk to that one guy and be like, I had dinner with Paul Allen twice in London. And then also that guy was referring to him as someone else. I think Harold something. Davis? Davis, Harold Davis or something. And then was like Patrick Bateman, that guy's such a loser. Someone else said that too. I think Paul Allen maybe said that. Multiple people said that. So I'm just like, what the fuck happened? I feel like I, you want to look this up? Yeah. We just... Briefly looked it up. Uh, I think we're legitimately allowed to be confused. Uh, yeah, it makes me feel a little bit better because I felt dumb after watching this and- I was definitely afraid that we missed something that yeah. was like, oh, here's the big reveal. And we just, whatever, went over our heads. But I think this is up for somewhat of an interpretation. Yeah, so it seems this is based on a novel. And then you read a different article than what I just read. What I read, it said essentially it could be like a metaphor to greed in like the corporate world and in just life. The more he was killing, the more he 
like had the urge to kill. Yeah. And the businessmen were, you know, the more successful, higher up the ladder they got, the more they just wanted to climb over other people to get there. Yeah, definitely greed, envy, um, like the business card situation where like that would just piss everyone. It wasn't just Bateman. I mean, he definitely took it personal, but yeah. everyone was like, wow, look at this new business card. Yeah. And every single person's title was vice president. Like you don't have 10 vice presidents of a company. Yeah, so, okay, I don't feel as bad now because I honestly, I feel like I was just so confused for a good majority of the film, but now I don't feel so bad. Obviously, in terms of the violence, like this film was extremely violent. And a lot of times we weren't 100% seeing exactly what was happening. Um, you know, Jared Leto getting the ax to the head, face. Yeah, um, it was very good in terms of the violence not being on screen. Like you said, the blood splatter with the ax. You saw the aftermath a lot, like the head in the freezer mm -hmm. or the bodies like hung up in the closet. There was a lot of blood, like a ton of blood, but like the yeah. actual like actions of things happening, we weren't visually seeing, which in a lot of like horror type films, like when you don't see the monster, when you don't see, you don't see the things that are supposed to be the scariest. Like your mind just like wanders oh, yeah. into even scarier territories. Like whatever he was doing to that girl underneath the sheet where like the sheet started getting bloody and then he like lifts up his face and there's blood all over his face. You maybe assume that he was just biting her. Yeah, I think he was like eating her because when he went to the bathroom after he chased Christy around, he started like gnawing on her leg. Right. So I, I don't know. He did at the end talk about how he ate brains and tried to cook people and stuff. But yeah, the violence was extreme. The gore was not, that was kept off screen. Yeah. But man, I mean, Christian Bale was just an absolute psycho in this movie. And just awful. Like, I don't think that there was any point in this movie that I wasn't actually cringing. Yeah, just uncomfortable from start to finish. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much strangeness in this movie that I I feel like I would have to watch it multiple times just to maybe pull something out of it. Um, like his obsession with talking about music before killing people, how he did nothing at his job at all, how there could be people in his life that he's like friends with and close with that just don't see him murdering people constantly, especially if he thinks that his kill total was like 20 to 40 people. I guess like, cause we don't really know 100% what was real and what wasn't. Cause we find out that the phone call at the end was real, but was he just having like a panic attack calling this lawyer? But then even the lawyer was like, who are you? I don't know. Because you're not Patrick Bateman. Yeah, was that even really his lawyer? Which was super odd too, because it's like, if that guy wasn't your lawyer, you just confessed <laughs> to murdering all these people. Thankfully, he just thought it was a joke. I feel like there was one moment where you kind of saw the world through his eyes very clearly. It was the ATM that said, feed the cat to the ATM or something. Yeah. Like that was, I think, a very clear moment where you saw the world how he sees the world. Yes. Everything else, you are maybe just like an observer of the situation. Whereas that was a scene where it was just like, oh wow, he really thinks an ATM is asking him to commit murder. He killed that lady, but that lady saved the cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also think that was one of the most uh, aggressive moments to like, hey, this guy is a villain, was the homeless man and the dog. Like no one, it's, it's a very strange thing, but I guess it does make sense and stuff, but you could see people get killed in a movie or something and okay, yeah, violence and stuff. When like a dog or an animal or something dies, the majority of people, they get very upset by that. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that with my reaction. I made a noise. <laughs> For the dog. When the dog was killed. And it honestly was more, obviously I'm like a massive dog lover, but I think it was just more shocking than anything because. I, I think that's what it, it's like shocking because I mean, the majority of movies, it's almost like taboo to go that far for yeah. killing. Like you would fully expect, oh, he's gonna kill this homeless guy, but that dog's probably gonna run off or something, or he's gonna scare it off. But when he just stomped on it multiple times and you heard it yelp, 
it was uh, a little bit of like a, hey, we're gonna go there. Because as disgusting as it is, you would see people get killed in movies and you just kind of get numb to it. Well, I think it was kind of how like gruesome too it was, like with the Yelp. And then like you see him like physically like stomping. Whereas like the stabbing, you didn't really even see exactly what was happening. Yeah. So obviously he's murdering someone, but it still wasn't as like graphic as the dog. It got much more graphic <laughs> throughout, but the first kill for us wasn't as graphic. Yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, it, that's definitely a thing, killing the dog or something. I mean, how many times do you watch a movie where like, oh man, I hope this dog doesn't die. I mean, it's like uh, the thing. The thing is like first 10 minutes or something. Oh shit, spoiler alert. <laughs> the thing, watch out. The dog, you know. Uh, I think it, if a movie is trying to set you up for some crazy shit to happen, they'll throw in something that doesn't typically happen in every movie. Yeah. That was a crazy reveal of how crazy he is. Yeah, and the fact that like he also was like videotaping a lot of this stuff. So there's just like evidence like everywhere of what was happening, uh, that notebook. I mean, if they were to take his agenda, his planner, like. That's why it's like, <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, just nothing happened. If I had to guess of what really happened, everything that we saw is just in the mind of Patrick Bateman. And he even thinks he has relationships with people that he doesn't have. And those are the people who just don't even know who he is. They don't really get his name right. They don't even know the correct name of his fiance. Um, but I don't think anyone really died. Maybe some people died, but I would assume the majority of people were not killed. I'm going the opposite direction. I think that he killed all those people. Even like Paul Allen, who that yeah. one lawyer said he had dinner with multiple times. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody knows who anybody is. Like, it sounded like a lot of the time people were just like dealing with people on the phone. No so, rhyme or reason for it, but I think <laughs> that it all happened. I don't know. This dude is nuts. And that's what I'm thinking. I think he's just so nuts that he just sits in his office and just fantasizes about killing people while he doodles and then he goes home. And, but nothing really happened. All right. I don't know. I was not expecting such a open-ended, like ambiguous story. Yeah I, yeah, I thought it was just going to be about a psycho. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be pretty straightforward, um, like slasher type of film, maybe like a little bit more psychological, but this was wild. <laughs> this was an absolute experience. I mean, the performances primarily by Christian Bale were excellent. Yeah. There was scenes and situations that were just haunting and horrifying, stuff that I've never seen before. Multiple moments of stress, especially after the first kill with Paul Allen. I don't think that's the first one, but the kill with Paul Allen and how like the room is all set up as like a kill room already. And then you kind of are tricked into a sense of security when the room is not a kill room yeah. when he had like Jean over, yeah. but he's like going around and picking out like, how am I going to kill her weapon stuff? And you're just stressed the whole time. So the movie was tense as hell also. Yeah, it, it definitely built things up. And because he was so unhinged, you never really knew what he was going to do. Yeah. Like when he walked into the bathroom to like strangle that one guy, I mean, you fully think, okay, he's crazy enough to just kill this guy in this bathroom of a restaurant. Yeah. Um, so the unpredictability of Patrick Bateman just made the movie wild. Yes, I agree completely. But kind of like we said, I don't think we were prepared for such a like, what the hell is going on type of story. Yeah. It also didn't really have like a motive. The movie was just about a crazy person. I don't really feel like there was like a beginning, middle, end. We just, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, there wasn't like really like a plot now that you think about it, besides like just following along with Patrick Bateman. Like there wasn't like a- There wasn't like a, a thread. There wasn't a story no. <laughs> really. It was just crazy. Yeah, like thinking about like, oh, was Patrick Bateman trying to get a promotion or was he planning a wedding with uh, Evelyn or whatever it was, there was no like story. It was all character driven by Patrick and all of the things that he did. Right, which were just seemingly nonsense or brutal 
actual real killing. Yeah, just a lot of like random, it was like living in his life for like, you know, a month of just the nights that he would go out and then he would go to work and yeah, like day to day stuff. I mean, the biggest possible story of this movie is the whole, is he going to get caught for Paul Allen type of thing? Right, with Willem Dafoe. And Willem Dafoe, I mean, that really didn't lead anywhere. I mean, Willem Dafoe at the end was just like, ah, you know, he's probably off somewhere. He'll probably show up. You know how things are. And then that was it. And while like Patrick Bateman's like, uh, I don't know where I was. And it's like, yeah, sure, that's good enough for me. And then that was over. Yeah, the the Willem Dafoe storyline was very interesting, though, because he brought up the music. He was like, well, are you sure this is where you went? Because I have that you were somewhere else. Like, everything that kept getting brought up was, like, just giant red flags. Yeah. Um, And Christian Bale, Patrick Bateman was not <laughs> slick at all. And it still was like, meh. I, I think the movie was just trying to stress you out, make you feel like, oh man, this detective's gonna really catch Patrick Bateman, and then just nothing happens with that. Yeah. And I even like the whole situation where Willem Dafoe was like, oh, uh, your alibi is this. And he was like, oh, you're right, that is my alibi. When he went to Paul Allen's place, and that realtor or whatever was like, did you see this in the New York Times, whatever? And he was like, oh, you're right, I did see this in the New York Times. She's like. That didn't happen, I was just lying. That is like a very similar conversation to what he had with Willem Dafoe, yet one person just let him go along with the lie and the other person immediately called him out on it. Yeah, and then it was just like, leave. Yeah, leave and never come back. It's like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Super strange. The only other thing I could think of with that is that Willem Dafoe had said that they were like, well, Paul and Allen's family's trying to keep this under wraps. Maybe if it really did happen. And all those bodies were there, they thought it was Paul that did it. They probably and then yeah. fled. Paul's family was maybe wealthy enough. If they hired a detective or something, they're like, oh my God, Paul's been killing people in his apartment and he fled. Like, let's just repaint and cover, clean everything. I mean, obviously sell everything it. was painted. Yeah. Let's sell it. Let's just, the story's over. If anyone comes asking questions, get them out of there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's a scene, I guess, if you look at it that way, that could really give you some evidence that this stuff did happen. Right. And he just got super lucky. Yeah, just got away with it. I was waiting to see someone that he killed mm -hmm. show up again at like the after, end. after, yeah. But no one did. Mm -hmm. So there's another thing. Maybe these people really are dead. Yeah, I mean, the only like little sprinkle of this is fake that you got was from that lawyer. And the lawyer didn't even really know who he was, so he doesn't have much credibility. Right. So, I don't know, I feel like maybe this is something that I would like to watch again. <laughs> um, not for like the whole brutality, but like maybe there's things that we could pick up on. Um, obviously it sounds like this should be kind of a open-ended, up for interpretation type film. Yeah. But I'd like to see, maybe we could catch more. I'm definitely interested to see everyone's perspective on this. Look up videos, articles, uh, there's, been a handful of movies. The list keeps growing for stuff that we've watched on the channel that have kind of left us in this position of wanting to know more. Um, so this was a phenomenally crazy movie that I am absolutely super interested in learning as much as I can about. Yeah, and I'm excited to read all the comments. Yeah. Thank you guys for recommending. A great start to spooky season. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.